I drove 1,200 miles to fish Sam Rayburn and Toledo Bend in hopes of catching a Texas giant. Oh my goodness, it is a tank. Found our first tree with a ton of fish on it. Here it comes. Got him. These are the bellies we were expecting on our fish on Sam Rayburn. Got him. There we go. It is an absolute giant Texas crappie. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Sam Rayburn, Texas. Uh, this is now my annual trip to Texas in the first week of November. Here we go. This is a bright, sunny day, and we got a ton of west wind, uh, which brings me to what I'm going to talk about in this video. I've never fished any creek channels. I've never fished this lake at all. So I'm going to break down this morning how I'm going to go about searching a few different spots on this lake. We're going to, I have no idea. We could swing and miss. We could come up with a three pound crappie. Uh, but I want to break down on a mapping system the homework I did before I even came to this lake and then what I'm using for side imaging, down imaging, and then of course live scope. A lot of you ask questions about that. How do you go about finding a new, finding crappie on a new body of water, especially one as big as Sam Rayburn? Well, that's what we're going to break down in this video. So to start off, I actually did some homework before driving to Sam Rayburn, and that was to break down uh, half a dozen or so spots to check out um, with my side imaging and live scope, just to cover a bunch of water as fast as I could in order to find the best locations for the chance at a big crappie. So here you can see an overview on the lake of Sam Rayburn. Uh, because the lake is so big, and obviously the gas prices were crazy for boat gas, um, I was limited to just kind of the southern portion of the lake. Um, I did make it to the middle part of the lake in the Black Forest area. So let's just start there. That is one of the areas, if you see G GPS point 296 and a few other GPS points, I had marked out um, areas where there's vertical timber to actually jig. So I knew I wanted to fish there. Um, the first day I actually went into what's called the Five Finger Bay area, um, which is actually what you're going to see here today. And a lot of these little creek channels going back into these coves, crappie this time of year, uh, in November, December, and probably even into the winter here, they're gonna suspend up on the edge of these creek channels and actually suspend in the middle of the creek channels as we get into the winter time. So that's what I was doing, uh, planning on doing in there. The lower part of the lake, you can see a flat line, there's a dam. Usually the dam has a lot of current. Typically there's a lot of timber or rock piles or stuff that just gets pushed up along the edge of that dam um, that usually holds crappie pretty well, so that was another place I was going to check out. And then again, on the eastern part of the lake, there's some finger bays that go back in and creek channels that kind of come together in those areas. Again, typically in the fall, if you can find creek channels that come together, that's a good place to start looking for crappie, especially big crappie in the fall. If you can find any piece of timber or brush, um, crappie will be suspended on them in that deeper water. Another place, if you go up the northeast side of the lake, um, still into some finger coves, but if you go way up there into the ash bayou or the ash arm of the lake, there is cypress trees, which is actually where I ended up on the last day of Sam Rayburn. But these are the areas that I picked out before even going to the lake. Break down on the map, just circle areas that you think have a high probability of crappie or finding crappie, and that is creek channels with pieces of timber. If you, if you can see pieces of timber on Google Maps or you know, on a mapping system, Navionics mapping system that says there's timber there and it has a creek channel kind of flowing through it or next to it. It's really good places to start to find fall to winter crappie. Okay, so as we're idling into these, these feeder creeks, I'm just focusing on probably 15 to 25 feet of water. Okay, that's, that's what I'm focusing on right now. And I'm just trying to find anything that might hold some fish there's some there's a log right there i've already found some brush piles or they're not brush piles they're they're submerged trees somebody dropped some submerged trees uh deeper in a second feeder creek but that's all, all i'm doing i'm i'm just slowly idling and i'm following these contours now you can see the contours this is all i'm doing i'm just idling along these contours and i'm gonna idle all the way into the back of this creek and i'm gonna idle all the way out and if I find anything that might hold some fish like this potentially, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a bunch of waypoints of stuff I find interesting, and then I'll circle back to it with the trolling motor and try to either get on top of it. There we go, something's right here. 
there's a some sort of tree right there that's perfect doesn't look like there's a ton of fish in it but i'm going to throw a waypoint down i'll double check it and it was right on a very steep break it's very it's hard to tell in the side imaging it was right here where this went up to it was in like 20 feet and it shot up to about 10 feet of water that's where i'm finding a lot of this stuff now we're in too shallow water we're on the, some weed lines but a lot of this timber that's where i'm finding it right on these hard breaks that go into the main creek channels here comes one got him there we go not the fish we were targeting but it is oh my goodness it is a tank that is a absolute tank and he choked it he's actually kind of kind of long and thin but here's some big healthy crappie here in texas good to be back good to be back in november he choked it look at that absolutely inhaled it yeah you're going home bud you're going back to the frying pan and put him on a scale because i want to see how, how heavy he is he actually doesn't feel that heavy i mean he's got he's probably a pound and a i'm gonna guess he's gonna go pound and pound and a quarter to pound and a half range guys that's a long skinny fish look at that that is a long skinny fish let's get the bump board out and uh i mean that's a i'm gonna say he's going to, gonna go 15 inches and where's my scale let's see what we got for weight one pound easy 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 one pound five ounces so pound and a quarter but look how long this fish is that's why i thought it was a giant holy smokes it is a that is the skinniest mouth closed and that is a 14 inch crappie that is by far the skinniest 14 incher i've ever caught but he's gonna taste pretty good Oh, there you go, bud. Crappie number one in the boat. Starting off Texas. Fantastic. Here comes a guy. Top jig. He wanted the top jig. It's another good one. Not as big as the last one, but that's still another good eater. I'm gonna probably keep about mm, six, six decent fish. Should be enough for a solid lunch. For the jig setup, because I know some of you guys watch on, on TV and you don't see the video description. So for the jig setup here, I'm using Crappie Monster. Um, this is just actually what I had tied on for my last trip. I haven't used these 12 footers since Tennessee fishing Watts Bar Lake. And so uh, this is just what I had on and what was working on Watts Bar Lake. Turns out it was uh, working pretty good. These are uh, the small fry by Crappie Monster. You get 20% off promo code Davis, all capital letters, D-A-V-I-S. We'll get you 20% off Crappie Monster, the entire site. These are 3 16 ounce ACC jigs. I'm using 10 pound braid. Typically when I come to Texas, straight braid, because we're gonna catch, hopefully we're gonna catch some two plus pounders, potentially a three. And then this is the uh, 12 foot super grip ACC rod, 1000 size PC Fun Carbon X reel. Yeah, it's 1000 out of 500. So that's the setup. I know people ask, some of you probably just watch on television or on your TV, on the YouTube app. So you probably don't see the video description. So there you go. Use the promo code, get yourself 20% off, and you get yourself 18% off on the reels. Use code FLOPPING, F-L-O-P-P-I-N-G, 18. Get you 18% off. So let me show you what I did here. You can see I marked some piles of wood or some timber. I went in all the way to the back, and I just looped back out, and I focused right on the edge of that creek channel. Now, I've already marked it with side imaging and down imaging, so now I'm gonna go back through and try to pinpoint with either live scope or if you don't have live scope, 
down imaging or 2D sonar if there's actually fish on these pieces of timber that I had marked. Just made that big loop through there. And that's all I'm gonna do. Um, it's already 11.45, so this is probably gonna be my last loop and then I'm gonna try it. Hopefully we can catch a couple more crappie here. We'll go fry them up for lunch and then we're gonna get back out in the water this afternoon, which will probably be part two of this video. Um, depends what I see. If, if I find some decent stuff in here, I'll probably run back into some of these little theater creeks. Um, if not, I don't know what I'm gonna do. By the way, highly, highly recommend investing in the boat lanes chip i think is i think it's like 60 bucks for this lake 50 60 bucks you can get a three lake chip for like 100 bucks like lake of the pines lake fork and sam rayburn it's uh boatlanes.com i'm not sponsored by them i'm just saying it's highly recommended i don't know i might run up into this ash arm way up into the ash arm here There it is. There's another tree that you want to see. It's a wildlife fish in the Mid-South. You can find stuff like this. Typically, you don't find stuff like this up north for the most part. It's hard to find them, but I have, haven't left the creek yet and we're still finding little bits and pieces. But as you can see on that side imaging, I've taken some screenshots for you. Set your side imaging left and right. At the most, I'd say 60, maybe 70 feet. I wouldn't go further than that, to be honest with you. Um, you gotta be able to see little stuff like this. And again, time on the water is key when you're using side or down imaging. Down imaging, you'd definitely be able to see this. You went right over the top of it. And there's some fish in there. I think there's some good ones too. Here comes one. Uh, I think he'll keep. I did check the regulations. It's 10 inches and 25 fish. I thought it was 10. Typically, Texas is pretty much 10 inches. It's not like Mississippi where they got... Ooh, I don't know. He'll keep. He probably won't keep, actually. Mississippi, some of those lakes have 12-inch minimums. That's all right. There's bigger fish down there. Oh, he, he is a keeper. But you know what? There's bigger fish down there. We're gonna let him go. See you, bud. Time on the water is key, and I understand if you're going on a trip like, like I am right now, where I only have five days to figure things out, and this is day number one. But being able to get comfortable with your side imaging and your down imaging is very key to finding pieces of cover like this, especially in the fall. It's gonna be a lot easier to see them because they're in a little bit deeper water. So your side imaging is probably gonna show up a little bit better. If it's in really shallow water, side imaging can get kind of tricky um, as far as seeing brush piles and stuff like that and picking part is there fish in the brush pile or not. But when they're this deep, you know, 20, 30 feet of water, pretty easy to pick out. how bad it is right now, but we got some, some pretty solid white caps coming from the west, and it's kind of limiting how far I can run. We're going to just idle back into this, and hopefully we got some timber or some brush that these crop are set up on. We can catch a bunch more today, and maybe just call it an early day, and we can go fry them up for like an early dinner. So, yeah, this is bad. I knew the Texas lakes get a little choppy from time to time, but this is this is like fishing on Mille Lacs or something, dang. I was going to bring my big kit, but I figured this would probably be easier to haul in the, in the truck. Take that off. There we go. Oh. Let's add our oil. This is a 10 gallon pot, but I think only, or a 10 quart pot. But I think like four quarts should do it. All right, well that's going. 
Um, I'm gonna go with, this is made by Fleet Farm, homestyle breading. I got a few different mixes that I brought. Try a few different ones out. Those are some fillets right there. I only got the two fish, unfortunately, but I think it'll be enough for some crappie tacos. And just pour in a little bit of breading. Shake and bake. We're at 200 degrees on the oil. All right, so while that oil heats up, we're gonna cut our vegetables. Got a green pepper, red tomato, and a lemon. Shaking them helps them from sticking to the bottom. You know they're done when they start floating. They're pretty pretty close to done there. I'm gonna give it one minute. All right, and there we go. You know they're done when they are flaky white. You see that? Flaky white. They come off in flakes like that. That's how you know those fish are done. That's fresh crappie tacos. Green peppers, red tomatoes, and some lime. And some lemon. Wrap a little bit. Squeeze some lime on there. Why do I keep calling these limes? They're lemons. Some lemon juice. Trensos crappie. I guess these are more burritos and tacos, right? Doesn't matter, they're gonna taste great. You really can't beat fresh caught fish cooked right by lakeside. I'm gonna finish eating this and then I'm gonna get ready to launch probably further up the ash arm. But that'll be the next video. Appreciate you sticking around for this morning's video. One of the main keys when you're you're trying to fish a brand new lake you've never been to before, you gotta move a lot and it really helps if you got a good mapping system and at least side imaging. Yeah, I got live scope and I understand some people, you know, don't really like that or don't probably because of price tag but if you can afford it it's going to help you a lot if not don't worry having mapping and side imaging is pretty much all you need you're going to find some fish you're going to find some some trees i found a ton of sunken trees that clearly people have been putting in there and dropping in 20 25 foot of water some of them are very fresh because i think some of them still have their leaves on them so I know a lot of fishing guides do that on this lake and do it quite a bit throughout Texas, but specifically on this lake with their uh, crappie motels up. So it's definitely something you can find. Just look on the edge of the creek channels. Those fish will be there eventually. Appreciate you watching. If you got any comments or questions about cooking, the fishing setup, sonar setup, anything like that, post them in the comment section below. Or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I always appreciate hearing from you. Some people ask about the subscribe button. I think a lot of you guys watch on television or on the on your TV with the YouTube app. So that's why I listed off everything, all my rod and reel setup in the beginning of the video. Because I know some of you don't, for whatever reason, the television doesn't let you click the description or something. But if you have any kind of questions, comments, there's a spider on my neck, let me know. Facebook, Instagram. All right, I'm gonna finish eating. We'll see you in the next video. And all those you see on the live scope, I'm pretty sure they're crappie. I mean, it is a massive school of fish. A solid crappie, that'd be a solid eater right there. See you, bud.